you recording? Okay. Uh, welcome to this April 17th, 2024 meeting of the Coldwell Rent Review Board. You can begin with a roll call, please. Sure. Councilman Jorgensen. Here. Ms. Evans. Here. Mr. Kostecka. Here. Mr. Irwin. Here. Mr. Galante. Here. Adequate notice of this rent review board meeting was given on January 25th, 2024. Notice was posted on the Bolton Board in Borough Hall, 24 Small Avenue, Caldwell, New Jersey. Official newspapers of the borough were notified of the meeting by mail, and all persons requesting notice were sent the same. Can all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay. Um, approval of the minutes. We all received the meeting. The uh, meeting minutes from March. Uh, it was pretty robust. If anybody has any. Um, questions or edits to that. Otherwise, we'll ask for a motion to receive those minutes. Uh, motion received. Second. Sevens. Yes. Ms. Decca. Yes. Mr. Irwin. Yes. Mr. Galante. Yes. Okay, great. Moving on to old business, the Victorados complaint, which was tabled from January 17th, February and March meetings. Uh, everybody should have received the current lease that we needed for Mr. and Mrs. Victorados, um, dated July 1st, 2023. Uh, I read through the lease, and of course, in uh, number 16 is parking, uh, of which there's no mention of any parking fees that were attributed to uh, the Victoratoses for their, their parking privileges at their apartment. Uh, reading through the lease further uh, under rent, and uh, let me see, I believe charges uh, section five charges which are additional rent i did not see any um uh line item regarding or related to parking fees uh if anybody uh you know feel free to jump in if you notice something that i might have missed um in this lease but i don't see any specific uh parking fee for either of their parking spaces which they have received since the um, the inception of their lease under the former owner uh, dated 2020. Yeah, no, the only thing he has in there is under 16 parking. You know, it's, um, let me just find it. That doesn't say it on that, so say that. No, never mind. Yeah, the, the way I interpreted that, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe under 16, the parking subsection, I think that I read it at least referring to any um, guaranteed space, meaning uh, the same parking space utilized all the time. It seems like the format of their parking lot uh, is first come, first served. I read it the same way. Uh, I was confused what, where, why it doesn't assign them spots, actually. Mm -hmm. They actually are assigned spots. Even though it may not be listed in the, in the lease, we all have, I mean, you know, the sister building to it, we all have assigned parking spots. Okay. There is, um, there is something separate that they put together that they still want us to sign, um, you know, that basically they asked us what spot were ours, 
plate number and everything that goes with it. And they asked me to please sign it, but they still haven't changed it from the $75 down. So I said, no. But I was just looking for the one thing that does say in here someplace that, you know, parking, you know, collectible is additional rent. I forget how it was worded in mine because I don't have it if, handy. If if I may interrupt and just ask a question to um, the board. I'm looking at under number five, charges which are additional rent. And then I scroll down to um, letter I, subset one, and they have sub uh, underneath that subset two, any additional attachments to the lease which for which there may be a fee charge or considered additional rent and collectible as additional rent, for example, parking garage or pet fees. Are we saying here that there's nothing here to look at because we don't have anything additional attached to this lease? Well, that's exactly, that's what I was looking for. Uh, that's exactly what I used when they were raising a 75 on me to keep it at the 35 is, you know, it's based as additional rent. It's not a separate anything. You know, so you can't just willy-nilly say, we're gonna go up to whatever number we want. Yeah, um, it, it seems pretty clear to me in this lease that there was no uh, separate stated parking fee, which it would have needed to have um, based on our ordinance as currently written. Um, that's not to say upon the renewal of the lease that could change, but, uh, you know, we're only dealing with the current lease as it as it stands now. Um, I don't see anything to be attributed to parking and any fee issued by the landlord, in my opinion, would uh, not be not not coincide with the ordinance uh, the way I interpret it. Well, Do we he, had have... from, he had sorry, he had from the last one the. I don't know if he supplied it or not. I know I did. The rider that they just came out with last year, that raised it to 75. Now, whether or not he signed it, I don't think he did. But before that, when they took over these buildings, they never had any, no amendments in there about parking. Like I said, for me, I just kept it status quo just because I thought it was the right thing to do and kept well, sending Well, that was for your extra spot. spot. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, that's what his problem is also. Yeah. But the thing is, this is a two bedroom apartment. Same with me. You have a two. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, Are there any representatives from uh, either Mr. or Mrs. Victorados or the landlord or their representation on the uh, on with us tonight? I have no hands raised in the attendees right now. Okay, I'm just looking through it to see if I recognize anybody. Hey, okay, um, Well, as it appears to me, uh, after reading through this lease and seeing nothing to the effect of uh, that was signed, at least by Mr. or Mrs. Victorados, the tenants in this matter, um, I'm inclined to side with the tenants on this complaint and basing that on Subsection, sorry, uh, subsection E of 182.11, that there shall be no independent increase on rent of parking spaces when not separately stated. It is not separately stated in the lease. So, um, I'll ask for that motion to um, 
I suppose, dismiss this case in favor of the tenant? How, how should I ask for that, John? So uh, we would uh, basically make a resolution in favor of the tenant's complaint to keep his parking, uh, well, to declare that the parking increase was in, illegal based on our um, the section that you, you adequately quoted, that the landlord was attempting to make an independent increase in rent on parking spaces, which the ordinance doesn't allow. Well, I'll make you. a motion that he cannot uh, make an independent increase on the parking spot. We'll ask for a second. A second. Sevens. Yes. Mr. Costeca. Yes. Mr. Irwin. Yes. Mr. Galante. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to the Muscatello complaint tabled from February and March. Uh, we all should have received an update <laughs> today from Kim. Um, in case you guys haven't seen that, I'll just read that real quick. Um, this is from uh, Mark Giuliano, who's the uh, borough code enforcer. Uh, he states that, uh, to my knowledge, the project is not complete. Machine and materials are still set up at the work site. It's a beautiful day today, but nobody was out there working. I do see Joe, who's the landlord, out there every few days working with another gentleman on repairs, but there have been many rainy and windy days, so I can't say if the job is progressing as it should. Um, and then on uh, that, that was sent uh, on Tuesday, April 16th. On Friday, April 12th, Mark Giuliano received a uh, email from Ms. Muscatello, who is a tenant in this matter. Uh, she states, I hope this email finds you well. I'm just keeping you in the loop. Joe's office had reached out last Thursday, April 4th, about Joe stopping by, presuming to see the bathroom window that is still leaking. I provided a time, and Joe did not stop by, and I did not hear from him and have not. I did reach out yesterday to see if we could coordinate a time, but have not heard back. That's all I got, just informing you. Uh, as far as the timeline of this complaint, on September 25th of 2023, the tenant first made the uh, uh, the landlord aware of this issue, that five out of six plus common area hallways and stairwells were uh, suffering from leaks. On January 29th, 2024, the uh, rent board received a complaint from this tenant. On February 10th, the complaint was referred to property maintenance. And on February 12th, uh, the property maintenance of the borough made it out to the site to do an inspection and a violation was issued to the landlord who was given 30 days to abate the issue. On March 15th, after the 30 days passed with no um, uh repairs uh, sufficiently made. Uh, the summons was issued to the landlord with a mandatory court date of March 28th. Um, that court date was did come with a footnote that it would be revoked uh, had the complaint, I mean, had the repairs been made by that date. And on March 26th, the court was contacted by an attorney for the dependent, defendant requesting adjournment with a new court date of April 25th. Uh, so as far as I can tell, this matter is still in limbo and out of our hands um, as April 25th has not arrived yet. So we uh, and repairs seem to be in some stage of progress. Uh, so it would be my recommendation to again table this complaint uh, to next month uh, pending any updates. Most do accept that. Second. Sevens. Yes. Mr. Costeca. Yes. Mr. Irwin. Yes. Mr. Galante. Yes.
Okay. Um, moving on to new business. It's the uh, chapter 182 ordinance review that we've been discussing. Now, we have heard from many tenants over the past couple months uh, throughout this review of this part of the ordinance. Um, it's my feeling, and I believe the board's general feeling, I don't want to speak for everybody, but um, throughout this discussion, it seems that this part of the ordinance does need to be visited and needs to be talked about and addressed based on the age of the ordinance and the amount of times that it comes into play during our hearings. Now, we do have a resolution in front of us as to what we were discussing last month. We decided to not vote on that resolution last month uh, in order to give the tenants that took time out of their day to join our meeting and express their thoughts and concerns about how any potential changes in this ordinance would affect them. Uh, I certainly took their testimony to heart and I believe, um, again, not trying to speak for everybody, but I, I think that uh, the board took that testimony to heart. So I do have a suggestion, uh, which is kind of a pivot from what we've been talking about, but chairing this board and chairing other boards gave me real pause about changing any statutes or recommending any changes because of mainly in my, my belief, unintended consequences. Unintended consequences a lot of times happen when you think you're doing what's best and what's right, but you may not always realize everybody that your decisions and actions affect. We heard from a lot of tenants that the two and three quarter percent was working for them that nobody likes an increase, but the two and three quarter percent has been palatable. It has allowed them to remain in their apartments and remain in our town, making our town what it is, supporting our downtown businesses and allowing people to stay here for as long as they wish to, whether they're seniors receiving a fixed income, whether they're low income individuals, whether they're transient or maybe they're young individuals or couples saving to purchase a home. With that said, I'd like to propose to the board and to those in the audience tonight, uh, a little bit different revision of this ordinance. My suggestion for a compromise for 182.11, um, would be a straight two and three quarter percent allowable increase, no matter what your rent is in town. Um, this would also include a senior abatement. Uh, application based, if you're a senior 65 years and older, um, the borough in my recommendation would need to come up with an application that seniors 65 and older can apply to the borough to have their rent reduced, their allowable increase reduced to one and three quarter percent per year. So again, that would be a straight two and three quarter percent maximum allowable increase for every tenant in the borough of Caldwell, no matter what you pay for rent. If you're a senior 65 and older, you can apply for your maximum allowable increase to be capped at one and three quarter percent per year. And I'd like to hear thoughts from the my fellow board members on that proposal. I have some thoughts. I totally agree with that because I did some calculations after our prior meeting and a little bit of research into CPI and I feel based on my calculations that what we were planning to do might actually not be favorable to senior citizens. I can give you my own, my own case. My rent is um, 
1244. And it would have raised me from two and three quarters to 5%. And 1% less would have been 4%, which still would have been a sizable amount of an increase. And I'm not saying this because it's me, but I'm saying this because I think there are a lot of people in my position. So I was actually going to bring that up tonight. So I'm very happy to hear you say what you said. I got to agree with her. Um, you know, a couple other people that talk at studios and the studios are just, you know, they fall into the higher percentile range. There are studios on a one bedroom. It's not a two bedroom, but all of a sudden you're in the lower level. And well, sorry, you have cheap rent. You know, we could bring it up four percent. Um, so what you're saying is spot on. And removing the tiers that are outdated and more or less useless, anyways, just in, simplifies things. I concur with my board members. <clears throat> Great. Um, I think this is a compromise that does not take much away from the landlords in town. It also allows seniors an easier route to stay in the apartments for as long as they are able to or would like to, um, while also offering relief. Now, we would not be alone in offering something like that to seniors. Uh, this suggestion was based on the New Jersey uh, tax reimburse, ta property tax reimbursement senior freeze program that's offered throughout New Jersey. Um, so seniors that are renters are not able to take um, discounts that homeowners uh, would otherwise be entitled to. So this would, in my opinion, sort of uh, help to level the playing field between seniors that are homeowners and seniors that are uh, renting in our town. Um, again, this needs to be uh, voted on and a resolution needs to take place. Uh, so I believe that, um, you know, if we vote to for this resolution, we will vote again next month, which will be in person. Uh, so I think that if we have any opposition to this from tenants or landlords, I think uh, at the next in-person meeting would be a good time to hear this before it goes to a final vote to be sent to the town council. Uh, but I appreciate the agreement and I'm glad, you know, it took us a couple months to work through this, but the testimony of the uh, tenants and the guests on our Zoom meetings uh, definitely helped us to see um, unintended consequences that were probable to arise with making these ty types of decisions. And I'm glad that uh, the board members took uh, their time to decide on on anything. Uh, Frank, I, I, I have a question. Yes. Um, I, I like this plan. I like the simplicity of it. And um, I like the fact that if somebody moves from a larger apartment down to a smaller apartment, they don't get penalized. Uh, you know, if somebody doesn't get penalized, who's, who's in a smaller apartment has to pay a larger percentage increase. I think this is fair up and down the line. But the one question I do have is about the um, senior abatement. Is there going to be an income uh, a gross adjusted income level that would, you know, in other words, if, you, if your gross adjusted income is below that amount, then you qualify. But if you're, if it's above that, you, you might not qualify. Is that, have you thought through that part? That That's a great question. And I believe that would be something that the town council would have to hammer out in creating this um, application. So I, I think that decision would rest with the council. I don't think that would be something that we can put into the ordinance necessarily. Uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's uh, kind of above above our head to come up with the application and the parameters for this uh, this initiative. 
Well, I think we've met our obligation under the ordinance to do an annual review and make recommendations. I think that's really what we should confine ourselves, what our duties are. Okay. Okay. With, with that said, um, I would like to um, make a motion to draft a resolution stating that section 182.11 be amended and the recommendations to the borough of Caldwell Council be as follows. Maximum allowable increase in rent in the borough of Caldwell be capped at two and three quarter percent, regardless of rent paid for such housing space. Further to the resolution, the borough council create an application for seniors 65 and older to potentially qualify to have their annual increases capped at one and three quarter percent. Motion to accept it. That's what we're waiting on. Second. Sevens. Yes. Mr. Kostaka. Yes. Mr. Irwin. Yes. Mr. Galante. Yes. Now, um, thank you, everybody. We also have suggested changes for the language um, referring to parking spaces and referring to pet fees. Uh, John, can they be included in that resolution also, that uh, language that we spoke about last month? Yes, 100%. Okay. Um, I'd further like to make a motion to add uh, the verbiage as noted in our March minutes uh, related to rental of parking slash garage spaces and uh, charges for pet fees. Uh, that those new That new language that was drafted please be added to that resolution also for the recommendation to the borough council. We'll ask for a motion on that. Sorry, grabbing papers. I'll motion to accept it. Okay. Second. Evans? Yes. Mr. Kostecka? Yes. Ms. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Galante? Yes. So um, th that's great. And I know this board has worked very hard uh, the past couple months to come up with these recommended changes and to do what's best and what's right for our town. So I appreciate everybody's effort and um, we will uh, plan to vote on those at the next uh, meeting in May. Uh, but at this time in the meeting, uh, we do have some guests. Uh, if anybody would like to raise their hand, if anybody um, has any statements to make. May, may I just address the chair for yes. a moment? Yes, sorry. There, there was a third section uh, that uh, we sought to recommend to the council with regard to pet fees. I, um, I included that. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. I missed that. Excellent. So we have the parking <laughs> fees and the pet fees. We're both, uh, we're both included. My apologies. Thank you, Chairman. That's all right. Thanks. Okay. Do we have anybody... Um, as we've arrived at the open to the public section of the meeting, if anybody would like to raise their hand, if anybody has any questions or comments. We do have three. So I'm going to start off with uh, Mr. John Carr.
Good evening. Hi, John. Um, I'm just curious on, can you just review the pet fee and the garage fee amendment, what you guys plan on submitting? Yeah, so so basically it's it's cleaning up the uh, the language uh, that was pretty ambiguous in the ordinance as written. So in essence, uh, the way that we're clearing up uh, garage fees and pet fees need to be added to the total of the rent. They can't be independent. So for example, if you sign your lease and you move into your apartment, you agree that you're paying $20 a month for your parking space and $20 a month for your cat. Um, that's where those fees are going to stay throughout the duration of your tenancy. Um, the landlord in our proposed changes cannot raise those fees independently of your rent. Now, if they choose to take that two and three quarter percent uh, allowable increase and apply $10 to your parking fee and $10 to your rent, they can do that, but they can't go over and above the two and three quarter percent that they're allowed to raise your rent. So they are allowed to raise the rent on the garages? I'm a little They're not allowed to raise rent on, um, excuse me. They're not allowed to raise the rent independently. So you can't be paying $20 a month for your whole tenancy and then all of a sudden they want a hundred dollars a month for your parking fee. They they won't be allowed to do that. Right, but you're you're kind of saying that they want you want to, the garage added in with the rent. Right now, our garage is separate from our rent, which they're not increasing the garage parking. So right, and they would not be allowed to to do that. Okay, so the if the garage rent's added with the apartment rent. Won't that increase the garage rent or no? I'm I'm having trouble understanding your question. So if you if you added together your garage rent and your apartment rent. Right. Right now our garage right now our garage is separate from our rent. It's always locked at the price they set it at when we moved in. Well, when we got the garage, it's a it's a locked deal. Now yeah. you're telling me that you want to take the garage rent and the apartment rent and combine them together and raise it two and three quarters percent. So, your garage rent and your apartment rent is your total rent. So, if you're paying nine fifty for your apartment and fifty dollars for your garage, that's a thousand dollars a month. That thousand dollars is what they're allowed to base their two and three quarters percent on. They can't raise your rent from your apartment from nine fifty to um, nine seventy six, and then raise your garage another twenty five dollars on top of that. They have to use that thousand dollars as their number, the total rent. That's the okay. way that we interpreted the rent control ordinance. Um, and we are clearing that up so that future boards will interpret it the same. The problem was that's the way that we interpreted. We're not changing our interpretation of the ordinance. We're cleaning up the language so that future boards will interpret it the way that it's been intended to be interpreted. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. And thank you very much for uh, making the decision you made on not raising the rent on the apartments. Well, thank it. you. Thank you yeah. for taking time out of your day to uh, bring your concerns to light. We You're appreciate welcome. it. That's what we're here for. Uh, John Chia, would it be possible for us to put uh, an example 
um, in the ordinance that shows how the new rent and the parking might be calculated if rents included as part of it, how the increase would be calculated? Sure, I'll do that. I'll add that to the resolution that we're sending over to the council. Is that what you're envisioning, Councilman? Yes, exactly. So now Not a problem. everybody can figure it out. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Okay. We have any more hands up? Yes, I have a person named Chris is the next one. I'm bringing them over now. Hi, can everyone hear me? Hi, Chris. Hi, good, good evening. Um, just wanted to comment here uh, regarding the um, ordinance uh, rent control for 182.11 proposal. Uh, I want to thank all, all of you for listening to us in the last meeting. I know it was a bit of a long meeting, but we all had to voice our concerns about this particular proposal, um, and we had a lot of them. Um, but I'd want to thank you all for uh, your decision here today. Uh, it does give us a sense of confidence knowing that you're here to listen to our concerns. Um, I did want to comment here for a couple of my neighbors um, who aren't able to access it uh, on the computer regarding your um, 65 plus uh, application for the deduction. Um, do you know where they would have to go to apply for that or how that setup works? So um, I, we believe that, uh, and we, we discussed this a little while ago, we believe that that application and the application's parameters would rest with the town council. That's the decision that they would have to make on if, if that, um, uh, privilege would be need based or just you know 65 and older apply and get it we we don't know that um that would be kind of up to the council to create that application and the parameters surrounding it um so again all we can do is make that recommendation and whether they pass it or deny it or pass it with changes is ultimately up to them understood okay and my other question uh, i guess when this does get to the mayor and council's um, table here. Um, do you know how long the process typically takes for this to go into effect? Is it five months or something along those timetables? Ken, Ken, you can answer that better than I can. Actually, I think Kim and Brittany could probably answer it better than I could. <laughs> uh, sure, so it would, so it's an ordinance change, so it has to have a first reading and then a publication a second reading and public hearing before it can be fully adopted onto the books. Um, I imagine it'll go on a meeting ahead of that to for simple discussion because uh, Councilman Jerkinson has to bring it up to the council. Um, so I imagine there might be one meeting of simple discussion on the on the recommendations, um, and then the attorney I would think would work with Mr. Kiaya on formula formulating the exact ordinance that we're looking for based on the resolution. And then, like I said, it would have to be introduced, public, uh, put it in the newspapers, and then uh, would be on another agenda for final adoption and public hearing. So Got it. Be about a month ago. All right. Understood. Thank you so much uh, for your time, everyone, and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a Mr. Jim McGrath. I'm going to bring him in now. Hello. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? Great. Uh, How are you? Not too bad. This is you're heading the right direction. Uh, Couple of my questions have kind of been answered. One was an application. How would we be notified that we knew that it was passed? Or is this something that we're just gonna have to keep an eye on? I know it's gotta to go to the, the council and that's gonna take a while. Uh, but we would we get any kind of official notification that we are eligible for this, uh, this application and put in for the uh, one and three quarter percent? 
Yes. So that's um, those are questions that are going to be answered in the coming months. The way I envision it, which is not necessarily the way it's going to happen, um, would be the tenant would need to seek this out. I would hope that it would be available on the borough's website. Um, but as far as the mechanics of the uh, application and where who it's sent to and who it's reviewed by and what the parameters are of the application remain to be seen. But I would hope to, um, you know, should this get passed and adopted, make that application clear, clearly available on the borough's website. Uh, so you just, you know, keep your eye on on the process the next couple months and how this goes through the council. And um, those questions will certainly be answered by the time if and when this is uh, passed and adopted. Okay, that's kind of what I figured I'd have to do, keep an eye on it myself, yeah. to see what, what happens with it. Uh, the other question I had was uh, pertaining to the garage. I pay like $100 a month for my garage. Uh, now, if you add that line item to the rent, that means I'm going to be paying uh, two and three quarter percent for my garage every year more. Well, that that fee could be added to your apartment or it could be added to your garage. They can't raise both independently. They can take the cumulative amount of rent you pay. If you pay a thousand dollars for your apartment and a hundred dollars for your garage, you pay a total rent of eleven hundred dollars. Right, and they can raise that rent uh, on the garage, including the apartment, two and three quarter percent. But but not independently. That two and three quarter. No, percent, I understand. Yeah. I understand that. But my garage was seventy five when I first moved here a number of years ago, and I assume they always listed that as as a hundred, but they only charged seventy five. I assume that's because I wasn't taking up a extra parking space. Because I could park right in front of my garage. But then they just recently raised it to 100 even for everybody. So I understand they there's no real rules on that. They could raise that at the drop of a dime, you know, another $25. Well, but, this, no, this is to prevent this is to prevent that. Right. I understand that, but it, from my point of view, I'm going to be paying an extra two and three quarter percent on that $100 garage fee every year well the landlord Just, was always entitled to charge you for that um yeah. whether or not they charge you that that's up to them uh but they have always been entitled to that again no, this, yeah this, this language is not changing any it's not changing the essence of the uh parking part of the ordinance is simply cleaning up the language to make it clear for uh future boards and future board attorneys to interpret uh, the way it's intended to be written. Um, but we can't speak for, you know, individual landlords and what they choose to uh, charge for or not. But I can tell you right now, the $25 uh, hike was probably not uh, an allowable increase when they did that. Uh, they had it, like I said, they had it worded that I was being charged $100 a month, but they'd always put a deductible of $25 in there. So it was already, I guess, legally on the paper that it was a hundred, but they only charged seventy five, and right, they raised right, that right. Uh, just this past year, I think. Okay, so they they found, uh, I guess, a loophole. Yeah. Just just so you know, I just want to point that out to you, and hopefully, uh, I won't be dead by the time they pass this uh, sixty five or old, older. I hope not. It's me too. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, actually, I was going to suggest that this uh, meeting was to have a deduction for seniors. Yeah, that's oh, something yeah. that we had talked about. And, uh, you know, we were just figuring out how to do it. And, you know, your testimony and the testimony of the other tenants over the past couple months um, helped us out in seeing uh, uh, folks that we were we were missing in um in our original suggestions and proposals and discussions so we we appreciate you taking your time out to uh help us to to see it from your point of view very good 
Well, I'm glad to see that you're sticking with the two and three quarters, and hopefully they'll won't put a cap on the uh, total income for the seniors. Because they always seem to come in uh, just above whatever they put the cap at. Right. So, but that'll be up to them. And if, if the discussion is going that way, you can certainly, uh, you know, chime in at the council meetings the same way that, uh, that, that you've joined us and, uh, and let them hear your concerns too. Yeah. Okay. Very good. I appreciate your, your, all your input here. It's good. Good meeting. Thank you. Signing out. I do have somebody else. There's uh, four more other people. One of it's from Insight Cafe. I'm going to put them on right now. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, the real name is Bob Markman, 501. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the fair and balanced you know, work you're doing. But regarding the 65 plus application, if you're a married couple and one member is above 65 and the other is below, how does that factor in? I don't have an answer for you, for you with on that, Bob. Um, that's something that when the council or the borough attorney or our attorney, uh, whoever is tasked with coming up with this application, should this measure pass, um, those are things uh, that they would uh, examine. So I... You know, we don't have uh, the coming up with the application is kind of out of our um, out of our scope. So we'll make the recommendation for this. But is the the actual application and parameters are going to be uh, decided by another another body. Thank you, so, Bob. Uh, thank you for that question, because uh, uh, when I bring this up to the council, I'll make sure that that's that that's part of it. Thank you. And I have a Mr. Victor Victorados bringing him in now. Can you hear me? Hi, Victor. Hey, Victor. Hi. How are you doing? I'm just following up on mine to see if uh, we had any progress on my situation. We ruled in your favor earlier in the meeting. Oh, okay. I missed it by about 12 minutes. Yes, no, that's all right. We checked to see if you were here before we voted, but uh, but uh, it's okay. We we ruled in your favor. The, uh, the lease that you provided us didn't speak anything to uh, parking fees, so we, we uh, adopted that resolution to leave them at zero. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, according to to my last bill from the uh, Caldwell Terrace LLC. Uh, they have an outstanding balance uh, uh, for me for the times that they did charge me. Will that be uh, negated? Yeah, uh, John, in, in the ultimate resolution that we will vote on to close that matter, uh, make sure that any uh, incurred parking fees are eliminated. Yeah, I think the ordinance says from the date that he filed the complaint. Okay, which was right away, so. Okay, awesome. Thank you very, very much uh, for your uh, understanding. Thank you. Quick question, uh, should we get a copy of it from him? Just so we know exactly what the fees were or, and it's on record? I can forward it right now if you'd like. Uh, I'll forward it to Brittany. Sure, I'll pass it on uh, to the board. Okay, this is the statement that they sent me uh, March 27th, which was for my uh, April uh, 1st to the 30th uh, rental. 
You got it, Brittany? I didn't know you were sending it right now. Um, hold on. Oh, I did. I, 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 I just did. Okay. Thank you very much again. Thanks, Victor. Thanks, Vic. Okay. Hey, okay, there's two more people. I'm going to bring in someone by the name of Helen. Bringing her in now. Hi, folks. Helene Picciuto. I wanted to thank you all for your serious consideration of the uh, rent increase. And uh, I appreciate you taking our concerns uh, seriously. Um, you said the next meeting was going to be in person. Where is that meeting going to be held? It's going to be at 14 Park Avenue in the uh, Health and Human Service building on the second floor. Okay. Right next door to the Caldwell Post Office. Ah, good. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, folks. Thanks, um, Elaine. Brittany, can you, are you in a position to be able to speak to the status of the Zoom capabilities from uh, 14 Park? Is, are they, in fact, ready to go today, or are they still working on it with the renter, with people who... They're not ready to go today. They're working with the deadline of May 1st. So oh, they, they are. Be... Okay. First. Yeah, they're actively working on purchasing the equipment to have uh, re the meetings uh, re recorded and broadcasted. So it's, it's being worked on, and it will be ready by May 1st, as far as I'm aware. So people who are interested, theoretically, can... Um, can still zoom in if they want, or they can come in person. We'll be I in person. I believe it must be in person. Oh, so the we so the panel, this panel has to be in person, but anyone the other who, people can to the request anyone who wants to attend the meeting has to be there in person. Oh, okay. Cast it on channel thirty-five, um, which you can find on your TV. But the idea is to get away from Zoom because the technology has been hacked. And they oh, OK, very good. All above board, they want to do it in person only for all boards. OK, thanks for explaining that. Sure. Thanks, Ken. And, and we we had discussed that. Um, well, I think I discussed that with Kim and Brittany that whatever the uh, the mayor and council wanted to do across all the boards we were going to be okay with um you know if they were going to give the zoom option for everybody then i would have wanted that for us but if they were going to move away from zoom then uh you know that's that's what we'll have to do yeah and if for some reason we'll change that changes we of course will notify the chair and the rest of the board but um it doesn't look like that's going to change thank you There's one more person with their hand raised, and it's just the letter J. So I'm going to bring them in now. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Oh, stranger. Yeah. Hey. Um, quick question about the increases or potential increases on parking and garages. What happens between tenancy? Between they have the option. See, while while a tenant has the garage, it'll only go up to two and three quarter percent. That's great. What happens between the tenant when a tenant leaves? Does the landlord have a right to jack it up hundreds or unlimited? I I don't know. In upon the inception of a new lease my understanding that the landlord has the right to set that apartment at I think it, it needs to be was it capped at uh, John 25 percent yeah it needs to be within 25 percent or at market value um, upon the inception of a new lease but you know right. that's a lease that you're voluntarily signing up for uh, what we're looking to protect is surprise fees within your yeah. tenancy Sounds good to me, and um, bravo. All right. Well, you, your testimony helped us, so we appreciate it. Thank you. This was good.
Right now, I have no new hands raised. Okay. All right, I got uh, just a couple quick things I just wanted to hit on. I'd... Paper leases for anybody who wanted it. For last meeting, we had somebody saying you know, they're just not computer literate. Um, we had the one girl who had issues with getting on, setting up her, her payments, told her accepted it, and then it didn't. Now she's got to make money orders out on a regular basis um, when she really hasn't had issues before that. But if somebody wants a paper lease, kind of like mail on voting, I guess, you know, should they be entitled to that? I I think, you know, I, I agree with you, Joe, no but, you know, I, I think that probably comes down to a business decision for the property management company. And, you know, Unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, these days, a lot of complexes are taken over by property managers who need to mm -hmm. institute those policies in order to, uh, you know, coincide with their business models. Um, I don't know if that's a decision we can make for make for them, although I agree with you and, you know, okay. I, I don't I don't do it like that in, in my uh building you know it's the, the old-fashioned way but i understand yeah I'm, companies need uh need to do things like that uh, for their uh their business models yeah i mean i would hope they would just you know hey you're older yeah we'll we'll make an adjustment for you and send you a lease but uh so the other two things i don't know we hit on i just had mark from the last one was let's see uh vets disabled vets going along with the seniors I know we, we touched on it, you know, but if you're a disabled vet on, you know, limited income or something like that, I wouldn't, I, I think it's a good idea to have that kind of incorporated in. You would have to prove it, you know, you have to be able to stand on it, but to kind of key that in with seniors, I don't think that's a bad idea. I support that. Yeah. Ken, Ken do you think, when you present this resolution, if it's voted on and adopted to the council, maybe leave it up to them if they want to include any other <clears throat> groups like that uh, into into this type of thing, into this type of program. Uh, yeah, I could ask them. Um, I could ask them about the disabled vets and if there's someone else that they think that should be uh, included. Um, I, I can ask them about that. Um, yeah, I wanted to go back to the uh, previous uh, topic about the person that's not computer literate. Is there a way that we could grandfather them so that, you know, you know, somebody, I, I don't know. I, I just look at this whole thing and I can picture this, this older person who's been living in an apartment for, you know, 20 years and now a new management company comes in and they're trying to throw her out just because she can't get online. It just that just doesn't seem right to me. And it's real. You know, that then that was one of the calls we had last week. So I mean I just look at that and I just say, isn't there isn't there something that we could do to say, you know, if you've been getting a we want you to we encourage everybody to go if they go over and they make it electronic, we encourage everybody to do that. But if there's somebody with extenuating circumstances, they can be grandfathered for you know, until they move out. I don't know. Well, I'll put that out for all the board members to comment on. John, is that anything like that, uh, to your knowledge, in any other types of uh, rent board ordinances in other towns? Um, no, and I'm a little challenged by um, to come up with the right words at this moment. I can certainly look into it, though, Chairman. Thank you. That's all I had to go back over. All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments? 
Um, I have a question. I'll just put it out to the board members about the disabled vets. Um, do they get do, do do disabled vets get any type of uh, rental, um, you know, uh, monies from the state or from the federal government to help them pay their rent? Do, does anybody know whether that's the case or not? I'm a, I'm a veteran, and I I do know a little, but not much. So I don't want to. Um... I do know that for for instance, in my taxes in this township of Caldwell, since I'm a veteran, I get a deduction of two hundred and fifty dollars per year. So I'm sure that that could be that that that's a consideration. If depending that's, on that's your, on your property tax. Yes, two hundred fifty dollars a year. If if someone is one hundred percent disabled, it has to be one hundred percent. They will get they they will have a, I think a zero property tax. Um, but so, the, but that's that's all completely on the, the far side of the spectrum. Um, I do not know of anything about uh, the rent, uh, councilman. Um, I just know about the tax break of two hundred fifty dollars per year if you're a veteran in it in the state, a federal law, I believe, but in the state of New Jersey. Um, I can't speak to. However, I do know that vet, disabled veterans do. Uh, get compensated for um, their disabilities, and I, I would, I believe that their that money that they receive then would go towards whatever they need to use that money for. It could be rent, it could be for a car, it could be for their phone. I don't think it, it's allocated di directly towards rent. So that's all I'm going to speak on that. Hmm. Oh, thank you, John. Definitely worth looking into. Just to note that even I would say even if a veteran, I, I, if the township or the state's doing it on taxes, I don't know if they're doing it on rent. Um, I, I don't know how that would work. So thank you for your time. I'll do a little research um, on the subject and see where that leads me. No. I'm reading this um, anchor benefit page, and it says under property tax credit, New Jersey renters age 65 and over who are not required to file an NJ 1040 tax return are eligible for a property tax credit up to $50. If you were a renter in New Jersey on October 1st, 2020, and not required to file a 1040, your property tax credit will be included in your anchor benefit payment. But um, this is just for 65 and older. I don't see any um, anything for vets on here, but it's that same 250 that you were saying. So leads me to believe that there may be something in there that we can tie to the 65 and older for vets. Okay. Thanks, Frank. All right. And thanks everybody. I think that was a good uh, a good meeting and a fair compromise to recommend. And uh, looking forward to seeing everybody next month to uh, to vote on it. It will be nice to see you all. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Aye. Aye. Second. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Thank Have you. A great one, everybody. Good evening. Good night. Good night.